Welcome to the podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time, a Kessor's family production. In this episode, we're going to talk about creating content, the side hustle, and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Our guest today is Shane Larson, founder of The Game Time Guru. The Game Time Guru is a content platform all about delivering a panoramic view on sports. Not only does Shane have a full-time job, but he also has a love for the side hustle. Shane brings the perspective of someone within the business world who has a vision and a goal. And because of that, any business owner or entrepreneur can learn from Shane, The Game Time Guru. Shane provides great knowledge on creating content within a productive routine, being passionate about what you do, and of course, sports. Because of all that and more, we are excited to have him on the podcast. Let's get into it. Shane, welcome to the Entrepreneur Perspectives Podcast. Great to have you. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So we're going to start with some questions requiring a little bit more of a thoughtful response and end with a round of rapid fire rapid fire questions. You ready to get going? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, cool. So you are a Boise State alum. Tell me your opinion of the Blue Field. Man, the blue field is actually really unique. Uh, but the thing is, for someone who's been in the Boise Valley for their whole entire life, to me, I almost would rather see a green field. But I'll tell you this real quick. The last year, uh, we're, we're at the game. I have season tickets. I've had season tickets for the last seven, eight years or so. Even when I was a student, I had season tickets. So I, I'm at the game. And we're, we're there. And to us, it's just something that's normal now. It's like we've we've been there. We've all played on it through, you know, our little league to high school days and stuff like that. So to us here that's been around, it's normal. But we had these guys that show up right behind us uh, at one of the games, and they were from Penn State. Or they were they all graduated from Penn State out in Pennsylvania, obviously, you know, Penn State. And they, uh, they show up because they were at a chiropractor's conference that was here in, in Idaho in the valley that I live in. And uh, they were – telling us they're like man this is so unique this stadium's so small compared to ours this and this and this but he's like you guys can't take this for granted this blue turf is incredible so they were talking about it and they're like i've seen this on tv so it was really cool hearing it from somebody else like to me i like the blue field but i would rather see it green but when those guys from penn state came over and said something about it i was like you know what this is really cool like i just i think i've been around it so long that it's just i don't see it from that perspective but it was cool to see someone else. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you go to Penn State, like they got the huge stadium, they do the whiteouts, you go at night, it's just nuts, and it just looks so big even on TV. But I, I would tell you from like my perspective of seeing it, it's different, it's unique. People tune in to watch Boise State, even if you are not a fan of college football and you heard about the blue field, especially when Boise State was kind of you know making their run some years ago and they beat Oklahoma, right? Like I think people took notice and yeah, it looks a little bit different on TV and I could get it like maybe getting a little bit annoyed with it and be like, let's move on. Let's just move to a green field. But from the outside world, like they innovated, they did something different. Like to me, a lot of times I watch these teams or watch these programs and they're like, you're trying to do the same thing of say an Oklahoma, a USC, a Florida, an Ohio state. And it's like, you're not going to compete on that level on a year to year basis. You have to do something different. And I get it. Blue fields don't make you a better football team. But it draws attention. And then if you can throw on top of it a quality program, wow, there's a lot you can do with it. And I think it's that innovation. It's the, I don't know if you've read uh, Seth Godin's book, The Purple Cow. It's you're creating something remarkable that's something that's worth watching and tuning into. And that's kind of how I think people from outside of the Boise State world see it. No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, let's get into a little bit. Uh, you heard the intro about you. I can't do you justice in one opening statement. So tell us something real about you that the audience doesn't know. Some audience doesn't know is that, uh, hey, well, I, I speak two languages. I, I speak Portuguese fluently, but um, I guess that's, that's something the audience doesn't know. I have a passion for sports, as they already know here. But, yeah, I speak two languages, so I hope to utilize that uh, one day down the road in the sports media field. So that just keep an eye on that somewhere down the pipeline maybe i'll do uh a, a podcast that's specifically in portuguese Who that's knows? awesome yeah so why why portuguese why when did you learn it why portuguese yeah so i served a mission for my church down in brazil so in 2008 through 2010 i was there for two years and 
uh, yeah, we basically, we go down there and we, you learn the language and you, and you speak to the people and obviously, yeah, you just live there. So yeah, I got to learn it when I went down there and uh, became fluent and it actually helped me out surprisingly uh, when I got back just this last semester in college. Uh, I'm 29 now, but <clears throat> I said that, so I got home when I was 21 and I still kept up with it. And this last semester of college, I, I tested out of Portuguese, got 12 credits, it took me about an hour and 10 minutes to take the test and uh, got 12 credits out of it. So I basically was able to utilize it not only for my own, like, you know, knowledge, but also for uh, school. So it's pretty cool to get my degree and that counted towards a full semester's worth of credits. Yeah, I mean, it's got to help you in so many different ways. And like you said, as you build your business out uh, some someday, taking advantage of that and right, it, who knows what it could lead to. So Absolutely, it's always awesome man. to be learning and something different, right? Something that totally is outside the normal realm of what you would think you'd be learning. I think that's pretty cool. So tell us a little bit about your content platform, the Game Time Guru. What that? What is that about? Yeah, the Game Time Guru is my my podcast that I came up with. Um, uh, my whole life, I've listened to you know sports radio, and I've heard you know different podcasts growing up for for any kind of platform. For that matter, business podcast, sports podcast. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to get my voice out there because I wanted to tell a story. So podcasting is like blogging. And I've done my sports journalism where I've written for a website for two years. Um, I used to write for iSportsWeb.com, this and that. But, like, I'm not a great writer. And so I realized that my strength wasn't in writing, but I was a better speaker. So I wanted to utilize a podcast to be able to tell my story. So I came up with the Game Time Guru. And what I wanted to do is give people a different perspective on sports. Now, I didn't want to just do the daily recaps and, and stuff like that because we already have that with a lot of the – a lot of the shows you see out there, they talk about the, the daily recaps, what happened in the games, this and this and this. While I do want to include a lot of those things in my podcast, I wanted to take it a different route and possibly like expand, talk about controversial topics, kind of dive deep into it. So for instance, you know, I wanted to come up with something and talk about women's sports. So one of my very first episodes was about women's sports and why they struggle. What's so bad about women's sports? Why are the ratings so low? Stuff that like people would normally be like well duh because it's not fun to watch but i wanted to explain and try to shed a little bit more light on it to see like if, if possibly i can make a difference and see if i can help the ratings with women's sports so that's what my whole idea was is to give a, a different perspective on sports so people can see the whole view and not just think of us all as dumb jocks as sports fans i should say you know the dumb jocks out there yeah so your focus and the i guess more the ultimate goal for the game time guru where are you going with it so my idea is, well, it's funny because originally I wanted to use it as a platform to like basically like a portfolio. Originally, I wanted it to be my portfolio. So if, if a job down the road, you know, opens up, I could say, hey, here's the link to my podcast that I have X amount of episodes for. And you can listen to that. That's what my voice sounds like. This is the interviews I do. This is the, the different things that I've learned through it. But uh, as I've grown um, and just in the last year, I've realized that like, okay, maybe I don't want to work for a major sports network anymore. Like maybe I want to make my own thing because I, I look up to Bill Simmons a lot. He, uh, he was one of my favorite uh, analysts and he's one of my favorite podcasters and, and he has his own show called the Bill Simmons show. Right. And it's on the ringer and that's his own network that he created. And hopefully this is what I want to do is I want to be able to take the game time guru, build that brand and make it into something where I don't have to meet an agenda. I can actually make my own content and I can do my own thing and people will listen to me and I can get uh, the engagement from the listeners. So originally it was to, to use it as a portfolio. Well, and while I still think that's, you know, probably it's going to have, I, I have my content there if I need it. I actually want to push it more towards my own thing as I'm learning more about business and owning my own business and running my own business, all that stuff. I kind of want it to be my own thing. And uh, if I can get the listeners, that would be the ultimate goal. Yeah. And it's an amazing time to be able to do that, right? Like probably when you were thinking about this, it wouldn't have been possible or would have been highly unlikely to then create your own thing where you had to go team up with ESPN, Fox Sports or whatever that might be, where now you have the ability to publish yourself immediately. Now, the problem is so many people are doing that. So there's a lot of noise to cut through. But I think like you're saying, you're, you're going at it from a different perspective. We love that word here because you have a different perspective. I think most entrepreneurs, most people like you or myself and, and others out there have a unique perspective on the way they see the world and the way they see business and the way they can then cut through that noise. 
Um, so something, and I think you say this quite a bit, and you, you've kind of uh, led to this a little bit, but you see, you see sports through a different lens. And you just talked about women's sports and all those types of things, right? Talk to me about the different lens or maybe some examples of what you're seeing differently that maybe most people don't see like you do. Right. So, man, w- with the different lenses, and, and I kind of touched base on this a little bit, and so I'll expand on it. The the whole stigma behind, like, sports fans, like, my whole life playing sports, people were like, well, he's a he's a dumb jock. They just have that, that you know, stigma. And uh, I wanted to show people that, like, sports are more than just jocks being dumb. I wanted to show them that there is a lot you can learn from them. Like, women's sports, it, it's more than just the actual game itself. It's it, it expands outside of that, which is, you know, you know, women can do a lot, you know, it's, it's the, it's just like, it's showing you, if you listen to the episode, I just talked about like, they actually are extremely athletic. There's a lot of good talent, but there's just not a lot of exposure. Why is that? I wanted to stem like, like get those discussions flowing basically. And, um, I wanted people to see that like sports are more than just a game. And so like, for me, I love sports for all sorts of reasons, the economic impact, that it has on society. Like if you look at collegiate and professional sports, you take those out completely, you would have a major economic impact because there's a lot of jobs that are created because of those things. There's a lot of money that generate like flows through because of those things. Um, I love the athleticism it requires to compete at a high level. Uh, Like if you see the guys like LeBron James, they have to take care of their bodies every single day. People don't see that because all they see is the finished product, but they don't, they don't see what goes into it. So I want people to be able to, kind of think like me like sports are supposed to bring people together they bring everyone together for one common goal one common purpose for like three hours of the football game and you go to an away game with your little group like five people to an away game for those three hours of the away game those people that you're around those are like your brothers those are your family members you're you're there for one common goal one common purpose for at least those three hours you can you usually can set everything aside so sports are much more than a game um and that's why i want people to start seeing them from a different lens so that's why i wanted to bring up some controversial topics but also some things that are outside of the norm like i said before that that aren't just the daily recaps and stuff like that man i love that i don't know if you've seen this or not and i have to send it to you but we have an article that's titled sports bring people together and i i believe in it so much like and it's a picture of my the cover photo for this article is a picture with my son and my parents, who both graduated from Ohio State, and last year we went to the Ohio State game. It was Ohio State versus Rutgers of all teams, right? It wasn't a big game. They were favored by like, I don't know how many points, 30-something points. It's in the article. But it was just like you talked about. It's like going to a game or going to a bar or going to your friend's house or texting with your friend. It was like all those different things. Like Sports is so important because it's not important in a way. It's important because, it, like you just said, it brings people together. So, I mean, we're definitely on the same, wave, same wavelength length here uh completely agree and i and i understand where you're coming from like there's so many different ways and angles and lenses you can see sports through um that's awesome it's awesome and i mean i think you continuing down that path i mean obviously i believe in it like i'm the type of person that i think you'd be after to say hey listen to my stuff watch my stuff read my stuff like i would do that and i know people that i associate with a lot of times that are as into sports as i am they would see it from the same lens that you see it and i think that's when you start appealing to people and it's very unique it's not like you said before the recap you know, you can go look up what happened in the game last night and there's going to be thousands of articles on it. And that's great. And if that's what people are doing, by all, by all means, go for it. But it's hard to cut through right. that noise because there's so many of them right now. So what's a different angle you can take uh, talking about it? So I think that's awesome. And I think, you know, continuing down that path for you is going to lead to some good things. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, that. Absolutely. So when we started community, we talk about communication a lot. We talk about creating the podcast and, and the way we met was on Anchor and Anchor is that audio platform and it's newer, uh, but it makes it easy to have an audio conversation straight from your phone. Um, what got you on Anchor originally and where do you see this platform or just basically audio in general going from here? Man, that's it, what, what actually happened. I followed Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Like religiously, right? I love Gary V. He's one of my favorites. I have a really good friend of mine who also follows him. So we, we like to discuss, you know, a lot of the things that he teaches, right? And I was on Twitter one morning. Gary V straight up says something, like he tweets out something and he he says, Messing with this anchor app and he tags anchor in there. I'm like, What is that? 
So I go and I check it out and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to set this up. This is cool. So I like looked at it. I'm like, dude, it's a podcasting app. That's pretty cool. I had already started my podcast. Like, and so it's on iTunes and all that, but I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll use this for my daily quick takes. So like I said, I don't like to, you know, do my full episodes that I, I release each week. I don't like to do those on the, the, the game recaps, but I can use anchor as a, a place to communicate with one another, like in an audio form for those daily recaps, if, if need be. So I, I opened up an account there and I, I started listening to other people's stuff and just communicating, man, I'll tell you right now, audio has a, has a huge ceiling. Like there's so much that's going to be happening with audio. And when I was at the Gary V event, like he came to Boise in September um, and we got to go to that and he, he did this Q and a, and he just spoke about, the power of audio. Like he straight up said, it's not too late to start a podcast, this and this and this. And the reason I think anchor has potential on any audio for that matter is because of what Gary V said. I totally believe it. If you really think about it in a couple of years, a lot of people can't drive and, and watch a video, right? They can't drive and watch a, a video of some kind because they got to drive, but, and, and then they can't take a shower and watch a video most of the time. But uh, if you can be the first 30 seconds of somebody's day, then you can stick in their mind. So if you can somehow breach that audio um, world and, and actually impact someone's day, like they're, first, like they're brushing their teeth, they're listening to your podcast, all of a sudden you might have a listener for good. So that's why I think that, you know, Anchor hit the audio field and I think it has potential. I think it's kind of mellowed out a little bit, but I think it's because there's not a lot of marketing behind it, to be honest. But um yeah, Anchor's legit, and as well as any other audio platform, because I think audio has a huge potential, which is a major reason why I'm doing this podcast. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, that's why we're doing it. And it's amazing what audio has done just for myself. Like when, before I started my business, it's almost been five years, I would, I started listening to podcasts. And, and I was listening to them at one time speed, but I was still listening to podcasts. And then eventually I got into Audible. I would always say like, oh, I don't want to listen to a book. I want to read the book. And I still do read the books, but I also want to do the Audible versions of the books. And then I started listening to it at speed. So now I could listen at one and a half times speed. And now some people think I'm crazy. I'll listen at two times speed because it's just, hey, if I can listen to something that takes an hour, but I can get it done in 30 minutes and I can still get out of it, what everything I wanted to get out of it, even better. So I think audio has incredible potential. I mean, I think it's already reached a potential, but it's like you said before, it it has so many places to go, uh, meaning up. And yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think Anchor, like you said, it has mellowed out a little bit, but I think some version of of Anchor or Anchor related is going to play out very well because of like the things that you just said. I mean, but then take it to this level, like you and I are talking now because of Anchor. And yeah, could we have met on Twitter, right. Instagram? Yeah, of course. But there's something about voice. There's something about like you right now can hear my inflection. I can hear yours. Like there's something about it, about being on the phone. And it's very it's very old school, I think, to be able to talk on the phone. But it's still like tried and true. People are like, well, how do you close business on Instagram or Facebook? And I'm like, because you take it offline and you go to different places like the phone, like a meeting, like a event, right? It's still the old school tactics still apply, but the closer we can create that relationship before we actually have that phone conversation, because I know that you're an Ohio State fan or that you're from Boise State because we already had that conversation on social media because or because of Anchor. So that that's where I'm at with it. I totally agree. And obviously, then Gary Vanderchuk starts going crazy about it, which which then brings all sorts of people into the game, which is great. And that's the reason for it. You just have a lot more noise to cut through as a result. But yeah. hey, if you do good work and good content, it'll happen. But I think we're on the same wavelength again uh, when it comes to audio. Dude, I, I just want to touch base on that too. As you're saying that, man, as a communication major, that's, that was my my field of study was was communication, relational and organizational studies. But I love the just the idea of communication, and that's huge. Like I've met so many people off of the Anchor app, which uh, which I've used. Like I've I've interviewed like Victor um, from the rebound. He has a sports podcast called the rebound. I feel like I know Victor. I've never seen him in person, but because of the audio um, Harv from seek first sports, I, I met him on anchor, just talking to him, talking sports, you know? And I felt like I know him like on a personal level. Like that's, that's the cool thing about it is all these people and like yourself, like all these, these people. And I think it's exactly what you said, man. It's the voice. You feel like you have that connection because you have the, the tone inflection you have everything that you can hear. And it, it just, 
it brings a whole new new element to communication. Absolutely. I mean, you, you just mentioned a few people that I've recognized on Anchor as well. And it, what's crazy too is we work with this group. Um, they do push-ups for Parkinson's. The, and he was, uh, he was on one of our podcasts earlier, Evan Cutler, and he founded this organization because his father had Parkinson's. And so what he does is he does 100 push-ups a day for Parkinson's. And it's incredible awareness. It's like the Ice Bucket Challenge. It's obviously nowhere near anything like that right now, but he's building this thing up. He's doing incredible things. Well, Har from Seek First, Seek First Sports heard about it. He gets on Instagram on his story, and for many days he was doing the push-ups and videotaping himself and adding the push-ups for Parkinson's, hashtagging it. It's like creating awareness. He's out in California, we're in North Carolina, and all of a sudden, like you build this thing up, but it all went back to anchor because there was a relationship that was built there. So I think we could go on and on about it, but it's just like you said. I mean, the way you can get commu- way you can communicate nowadays and use audio to your advantage, it's amazing. So absolutely, you have, I, I mean, I think anyone listening to this would see it. Like you have a ton of hustle going on right now. You have a drive, you have a passion, what you do. We, as you know, we have our content platform, sports Epreneur. We talk about, you know, uh, relating business and sports together. Um, we talked about the side hustle. We talked about how the side hustle is real and you can do it too. What is it like for you having a full-time job and then also consistently producing content for your side hustle? And it's brutal. It is brutal, especially having a wife and a little boy who's a year old. It's 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 brutal. But the thing is, is it makes it it makes it fun when you're surrounded by people that are interested in the same thing. And I happen to have my wife who is uh, running her own blog, and she's trying to get her her blog, you know, up and going. And she's starting to gain some momentum with that. Uh, my buddies that I'm really close to, they host their own podcast and they do their own thing. Um, and so we're always motivating each other because, yeah, man, it's it is really tough working, you know, you're 40 hours a week and then you have your family time and stuff like that. So you have to be really good with organizing your time. That said, I honestly believe that, you know, going to school full time and working full time for the last, you know, whatever years. And, and I was late to graduate, right? I was, I was 28 years old when I graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree, which some would say like, dude, that's crazy. But what I took from it though, was the fact that I was working full time and then I was doing part-time school for the most part. But then my last two years, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go to school full-time, 12 to 15 credits a semester, work my 40 hours a week, and, and get it done. And by doing that, I was able to focus on really utilizing my time correctly. Like, I had to prioritize. So when I graduated, it's not as hard as some people would think. It is busy. But, like, I think that my, my experience in school helped me. And now I can prioritize. Like, here's what I'm going to be recording and if it, if it switches and I have to make a change to my schedule, that's fine. I just have to switch some other things around and, 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 and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's, it's brutal. But, honestly, I always look at the ultimate goal down the road. And as I'm seeing the, the progress of it as well, like the downloads each month are going up little by little um, with my podcast and stuff like that. When you start to see the, it gain some momentum, it gives you a little extra fuel when you're running on fumes. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you have your routine. It sounds like you, you focus on productivity through a routine that you have. And yeah, that routine's going to get thrown off, right? Life gets in the way always. Um, but it sounds like your routine is very important to you to stick to it. And then as long as you're sticking to that, yeah, you're busy and you have a lot of things going on. It's going and, and you have an eye on the larger prize, right? Or the bigger idea, your pat, your your ultimate goal. That's going to keep you going. Is that right? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And you'll notice that like uh, my, my closest friends will always say I'm very meticulous in the way I think. Like I have like, uh, like I'm structured, man. Like I like to have structure, but it is sometimes you get thrown off your, I do like my routine, but I, you just, I think being in school and stuff and all that and everything I've experienced, like you just have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to make yeah. those slight changes, but yeah, uh, the ultimate goal is in mind it, and it feeds, it feeds me. Yeah, no, I get it. So do you have time for, doing other things outside of your work? You know, like, what are you passionate about outside of your day-to-day stuff? So, I mean, I, I love competing in sports. That's what I love to do. So, you know, when uh, we play in the city league sports leagues around here, obviously I'm too old to be doing anything like major, but yeah, you play in our city leagues for like flag football and for, for, you know, basketball and stuff like that. I love to compete and I love to travel as well. And that's another thing, man, like my, my wife likes to travel. So even this week, like, we're, we're heading out to California. We're here in Idaho. We're heading down to San Diego to just hang out for the weekend. I love traveling. So as long as I, you know, I, I always like to reward myself and make sure that I'm not always just so stuck in the game that I can't enjoy my life. 
So I do love, you know, participating in sports and traveling. And I think I get to do that quite a bit. I think that uh, we work it out to, to where we have that extra time for those activities. As, a, as another thing, though, like it, it, what's funny about like the side hustles, I don't know if we would call this a side hustle or not, but I wanted, when I was talking about traveling, um, that's the way I'm able to do that is because of some side hustle stuff, if you want to call it that. Uh, one, I, was, I learned it through my buddy who hosts host his own podcast called 60 Days to Living. He talks about reselling. He had this, this YouTube series that he, he put together. It's called 60 Days to Living, and he, he talked about reselling, like going to the garage sales, going to garage sales and then reselling the stuff on eBay. Well, I started getting into that, and what's funny about it is I actually like was reselling some stuff on eBay uh, earlier in the year, ended up making myself a couple hundred dollars just really quickly, just selling stuff out of my house, reselling some stuff that I purchased and, you know, sell it for $10, $15 more. And I made a few hundred dollars. I think we, we, we ended up bringing about $340 in cash just to Ohio when we went to an Ohio state game and we used that as our spending money. So like we were able to travel because of that, but we also made it to Ohio off of credit card rewards. So people get so scared about these credit card rewards. You don't get into credit card debt. Well, we don't have any credit card debt, but we play this game with the credit card rewards points where, hey, if we have a major expense we need to pay for, let's get this card that gives us 50,000 bonus points towards a free flight, this and this and this. So um, we were able to play the game properly, and that's kind of like a side hustle in itself for me, the credit card rewards points, because we don't have any credit card debt, and we've been able to go – I've been able to go to a Cowboys game in Texas. We went to the Ohio State Clemson game. So two flights to Arizona, two flights to Columbus, and now we're using credit card rewards to head down to San Diego. So I've saved myself thousands of dollars off of flights because of the credit card rewards. And so I almost think of that as a side hustle too. So I just wanted to throw that in there because it is actually really fun. It is. It's amazing. And there's no excuse, right? You realize that you need to travel. Like for you, for your wife, like there's certain things that you have to do and travel is part of it. And I think it's going to allow you then to see sports life through the different lens that we talked about. And I think, and you're going out there and doing it. And that's so cool too, is there's businesses, there's blogs based around what you just talked about, the credit cards, the points. I mean, there's people that they talk about that, like financial planners build incredible blogs. They don't talk about the different stocks to pick. They talk about how to travel properly and how to use the credit cards to your advantage. That's their content marketing, if you will. Um, So there's just like endless possibilities of businesses. And as you dive deep into all these different things, you uncover all these different unique businesses that exist. And then anyone can take advantage of it, right? For the better. So, no, I think that's cool. Well, now you've already, you touched on the subject. You talked about going to Ohio State. I think it was the Oklahoma, Ohio State. You mentioned the Clemson game from last. I don't even want to talk about that one. But we were both at the, I was there as well. And this, again, I brought my son to this game. And we had said, oh, man, Oklahoma's coming to town. We are going to that game. It's going to be a night game. It's going to be crazy. Ohio State's going to be ready to go. And so anyway, the outcome was not favorable for the Buckeyes, as we know, but the atmosphere was incredible. You talked about it on a podcast. You talked about the difference between Boise State and Ohio State, both great, both different, unique, and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about the atmosphere in Columbus and how unique it was. Man, like, that was unlike anything I've ever seen. And I've been to some big games, man. Like, people around here that know me, they, they know that I, like, that's what I do. I love to travel to sports games, for one. Like, before I was married, <clears throat> that's what we did. So, like, I've been to the, the, the Oklahoma-Boise State Fiesta Bowl, the Statue of Liberty. We were right there, 15, wow. 16 rows yeah. up, right? And we were at the – we were at the Virginia Tech Boise State game out in, in D.C. in 2010. We were at the Georgia game, Boise State 2011. Like, we've been to some big games, right? But nothing compared to the Ohio State-Oklahoma game. And it, it was just unreal to me, man. Like, when we're coming down the freeway, that's my first time in Ohio, we're coming off the freeway, and the entire right side of the freeway, like where the side of the freeway where the stadium's at, it was already, like, three miles away from the stadium. It's just packed with – thousands of tailgaters i'm like dude it's like 10 o'clock in the morning and the <laughs> game's not till what like seven it was yeah. like or like a five something kick it was later kickoff six yeah. seven. Oh man it was yeah. just unreal and just the the food that was out there the food trucks and the the tradition behind everything i was able to walk on campus and see how amazing the campus looked and i didn't realize how like it was it's kind of old like it is it's an older school so it's like this there's this old feel to it that's really neat there's a lot of tradition and then the game itself, man, there's nothing like it. Like, I'm used to 34, 35,000 people coming to Boise State games, and we're lucky if we even get that. Like, right now, this year, we're struggling to get fans at the stadium, and they complain about it all the time, this and that. 
109,000 people at that game just screaming from start to finish. And you know what? Hats off to the Oklahoma fans as well. Like, I hate Oklahoma. I'm just going to say that right now. I, I used to hate them a lot. I, I've gained a little bit more respect for them because I like Baker Mayfield, but that's beyond the point. Um, so the fans, though, were actually really behind their team the whole way, and they weren't disrespectful, but at least the ones that were sitting next to me, they you got to see them like be passionate about their team the same as I'm passionate about mine, and it was just really cool. They were really respectful, and like I was just like, man, this is insane. This is two power programs meeting up in Columbus and the fans was all over the place. It was just such an awesome experience, man. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, I, and I, I'll, I'll have the same sentiment on Oklahoma fans. I mean, the ones that we sat with had a great time. I actually congratulated them as I walked out and said, man, you guys are good. I said, Baker Mayfield's going to win the Heisman Trophy. And I mean, that guy's going nuts right now. There's a long way to go as we record this. We still have a few weeks left in the season. So who knows and all that. But you're right, man. It's a I've we've gone in the last few years we've gone and I start to see it like more even more through a different lens and you watch the production quality that goes on there and it's every it's not just the football game like you were kind of alluding to there's so much to it it's the sports bringing people together aspect it's the band it's the it's just every little thing that's going on and around outside of it. Everyone wearing the scarlet, right? It's just there's so much that goes into, and it's not just Ohio State, right? You go to Oklahoma, you go to any of these other programs, Clemson, you know, maybe Ohio State has a different level to it. You know, maybe you would say that. But either way, I think a lot of people could be proud for, you know, whether they went to the school or legacy of the school. It's just amazing what they do uh, from a, like, let's say it, like a marketing standpoint to bring attention to the ultimate product on the field. Now, at the end of the day, the product has to be good. It's like if you create awareness around your podcast and your podcast is no good, well, it doesn't matter. All the awareness couldn't couldn't keep that thing going. But if you create incredible awareness and do all the fun things and have a history behind it and whatnot, and then people come and see the product and the product is good, even better. Now, that day, the product of Ohio State football team wasn't great, but this, it didn't change the fact of the game and the two teams colliding. Um, and we maybe have some more issues with the product on the field, like last week when Ohio State, uh, I think they <laughs> lost some team in Iowa. I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll move past that real fast. But yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, I mean, I, I hear you and I see it from a lot of people that get to go to Ohio State for the first time. Like I was at the I don't know why I'm going to these games where they lose, but I was at the Virginia Tech game in 2014. And oh, no. <laughs> we had fr- we had friends with us that were Virginia Tech people and we didn't sit with them. But he texted me. He walked into the stadium. He's just like. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Like what, this is incredible. Like in Virginia Tech, we went the next year and had an incredible time at Virginia Tech, but it is, it's just something different. It's dark out, the lights are on and it's just, it's, it's wild. It's, and that's sports and it's fun and it is exciting, you know? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Gosh, yeah. give me chills just thinking yeah, about the game so again. Yeah, we got to go to so another big. game. We got to go to another <laughs> game. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But you know what I think is really cool is is um, everything you do revolves around what your ultimate goal is, is to create this product, to create yourself as this guy like the Bill Simmons podcast and to have you a, a unique approach around it. And I think in your work and anything that you do, whether it's your full-time job, and you know, I think that relates to a lot of the work that you're doing, anything that you're doing when you're traveling, I think it's amazing, and we've talked about this before, but every entrepreneur that we've had on this podcast seems to me that they have a common theme into whatever it is they're doing individually, and you clearly have that, and you have a defined goal, but you also have a goal that is going has evolved, right? You realize that I don't want to go to this place anymore. That was my goal, but it's changed a little bit because of outside factors, right? We talked about this offline. I mean, we we own an insurance company. And the insurance industry is absolutely in the disruption mode. It's very early, but disruption can come in many ways. It can come from a competitor. It can come from a mistake. It can come from, you know, who knows what happens. It can come from the government changing changing laws. You know, in insurance, there's a lot of discussion right now around taxation of insurance and how that's going to play a part. Those things can change your business tomorrow. But as long as you are continuing to innovate, as long as you are nimble enough to be able to evolve, and I know that's kind of cliche and using that word, but it's true. And that's what you're doing. And I think that's awesome. And that's why we want to have people like you, you know, on the podcast and especially your unique approach of doing a side hustle, but having so much passion around everything that you're doing. I'll stop there. But I just want to say we appreciate you bringing that type of perspective to this podcast. 
Well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Don't go anywhere because we are going into some rapid fire questions right after this message. We would like to take a quick moment to tell you about an organization we work closely with called RODS, which stands for Racing for Orphans with Down Syndrome. We are a proud supporter of RODS Racing. The RODS mission is to nurture a positive image of Down Syndrome, to promote awareness for the adoption of orphans with Down Syndrome, and by participating in organized athletic races and awareness events. Ultimately, the goal is to find homes for all orphans with Down Syndrome. Because of our relationship with the founder of RODS, Brady Murray, we are honored to be able to contribute our work in the area of marketing to create even more awareness around RODS and their mission. You can learn more about RODS at RODS.org. So that's the thoughtful uh, questions. We want to go more rapid fire round. We'll go quick, uh, but take your time with them if you need to, but we'll go as fast as possible. You ready to get going? Let's do it, man. All right, cool. What book are you reading right now? I am rereading Expert Secrets, written by Russell Brunson. He's actually the CEO of the company I work for, but yeah, it's Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Okay. What is your favorite social media network? We're talking about innovative change, stuff like that. I'm, I'm starting to lean towards Facebook. Okay. Is it because of, I mean, you? I would imagine your delay in that answer is because you like a lot of the different networks. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, however, lately I have seen a little bit more success as I started to utilize Facebook, my Facebook Live features and stuff like that. I've seen a little bit more uh, steam get picked up from utilizing those types of platforms on Facebook. And since it does have the live feature, um, it's a little bit more, I guess, it, it's a little bit more intact than like Twitter's Periscope and stuff like that. And I feel like it's helped me out a little bit more. So I'm kind of leaning towards Facebook, whereas before I couldn't stand Facebook. So yeah, yeah. I know it's changing, yeah. but I would say it now. Facebook. Is that, are you using Facebook from the, like the Game Time Guru Facebook page? Yes. Okay. So I have a, yeah, I use the Facebook page for the game time guru business page is what you would call it yep okay so what social media app has you the most confused i would say it's i would say it's instagram i love instagram but the social media app the instagram it's it's frustrating to me with the limitations uh should you put hashtags in your post should you not if you put too many, will you be shadow banned and not be able to reach out to, to more people? I mean, we're, I've seen a lot of people deal with that. My wife is one of them. Like if you put too many hashtags or you use a certain hashtag, they don't tell you there's no communication behind it from the help support team or anything like that. Like, so Instagram's got me a little confused. I think there's a major potential with Instagram. There's a lot of people that utilize it. Uh, but they have all these like little rules that they don't talk about and they don't communicate. And like, there's no way, to know for sure so it's kind of more of just trial and error yep. which is fine but i would like to have a little bit more structure to at least understand it before i start utilizing it a lot yeah and i mean for us instagram is one of our favorites but you're right and because they're owned by facebook um as you kind of alluded to earlier there's a lot of things that it's hard to understand no and nobody knows no one understands it except for the people that maybe work in those specific departments within facebook or instagram and it is it does change. We've seen engagement go up, we've seen it go down, we've seen it go back up and you know, it's really hard to try to figure out exactly why things are happening because there's no way to know, right? You just have to continue to try it out, but I do think the window of opportunity in any of these platforms and Instagram I think right now specifically is is there because a potential customer or a potential client or opportunity can see into your business like never before. And I think that's an incredible opportunity. We have a client now, uh, they're a custom door manufacturer. We do content marketing for them. And what is so cool is they were designing a house, a you know multi-million dollar home. They saw the images of their custom door hardware on Instagram that we had posted. And they said, we want to use your door, door hardware on this home. What would that cost us, right? That's it. That's oh, wow. this window of opportunity that exists. And it exists in all different platforms, right? In all different ways. And, and, you know, Anchor could be one and all that. But I think there's opportunity with them. And it is. It's trial and error. You got to keep going. It's it's not easy. It's frustrating for a lot of people. But, but I also agree with you, too, where figure out what is working for you and double down on that. So it makes a lot of sense. Right. So if you were to look at your phone right now, what is the app that's most important to you? Facebook, probably. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's the common theme, right? It just sticks with it wherever you yeah. are right now. Just stick with it. No, I like that. So you're an up and coming entrepreneur. 
uh, you have a side hustle, you have a lot of things going on. What's the one thing you would tell an up and coming entrepreneur to focus on? I would say your strengths. And I know that sounds cliche, but I would say focus on your strengths. Um, because when you do that, it makes it easier to continue to roll with things when you feel like nothing's happening. If you just focus on your strengths and you say, Hey, I'm good at this. And that's why I love expert secrets. I'm just going to throw that in there again because everybody is an expert in their own field, whether they believe so or not. If you're, you know, you're, everyone's an expert in one way or another, whether they believe it or not. So you have to realize that you are truly an expert and that there are people out there that would like to, you know, utilize your knowledge for their own growth. So focus on your strengths and that will get you through it. So focus on your strengths would be what I'd say. I like that one. All right. I know there's many people, but who is one person that helped get you where you are today? So I'll, I'll go back to say it again. Um, my, my best friend, his name is Miles Clifford. He, he hosts his own podcast called 60 Days to Living. The reason I say that, though, is because him and I have been talking since we were in high school, right? We've, you know, we've been best friends since, for 15 years. He has helped me in the sense of he, we think like we're, we're very like-minded. Like he doesn't have a sports podcast, but he has a business podcast. But we, we share ideas with one another. We're always, you know, lifting each other up, whether it's in the business, the business field or if it's just in our personal lives. Lift each other up pick each other up when each other are down, you know, like when, when each one of us is down, um, just being around him, he's, he's been able to help me get to where I'm at. He encouraged me to do, you know, certain things, just jump off the ledge where I might be a little too meticulous with certain things. And I don't want to, I need to have a certain date that I'm going to, you know, by this date, I'm going to do this. He goes, well, just do it now and then improve it later. Like he's, he's encouraged me to just jump and go. So I'd say my buddy miles. That's excellent. And you said it's 60 days to living is his podcast. Yeah, 60 Days to Living, okay. and he's, he's got some great interviews on there already. He's starting to pick up steam with that. So we'll, we'll check it out. We'll put that in the show notes as well so other people can, can go over to it. So that's awesome. So you're talking a lot about podcasts. Obviously, you got your podcast. Your friend does. You're on a podcast now. If someone is starting a podcast today, what would you tell them? You know, for me, honestly, if you're starting a podcast, I would I would encourage you to, to study up on what what the – you know, the good, the things to have are just like study up a little bit, right? So Google it, find some articles, some blogs, even so listen to some podcasts. So you have an understanding of like the outline of a podcast. I always told people I listened to podcasts on podcasts before I started just to kind of hear what these podcasters thought would be a good idea, you know, for when you start a podcast, like, should you have good sound? Does that really impact the listeners? which the statistics prove that it does. Like if you have good sound quality and it's a new podcast, people are more prone to continue to listen to it because it doesn't hurt their ears, stuff like that. So I would study up. Um, don't just jump into it, but study up. Even if it's just for a week, just read a few articles, listen to a few podcasts before you actually jump into it um, so that you can have a structure. Because like you said, Eric, you said that uh, the you can bring awareness to everything. You can be the greatest marketer, but if your product sucks, that's not really going to go anywhere. So I would just encourage people to at least have that base of a solid product before they jump into it um, so that they can continue to grow with their awesome marketing around it. Yeah, no, I would agree. And I think listening to other people's podcasts is an incredible way. Listen to Shane's, listen to this one, listen to uh, Miles, right? I mean, there's so many podcasts yeah. out there and just give it a shot. And what's cool, again, I don't know if you do this, but I already said it before, the two times, it's incredible. You can listen to these things really quickly nowadays. And uh, I think that that certainly helps as well. So absolutely. All right. Let's go back into sports a little bit. We've already touched on college football. Let's talk about that more. We're in the second week of the college football playoff rankings as we're recording this. We've got some big games coming up this weekend. Uh, playoff is getting a little bit clearer. But as we know, chaos will happen, right? It always does. So right now, if you were to look at it, Shane, who do you think is the team that could win the national ch Not could win. Who's going to win it? Like put yourself out there right now. I think Clemson's got it when they're when they're rolling, and they. I think they're. I mean, I think Clemson's good, man. So, I just think they went out. They're gonna win it. I think they can beat Alabama. I I know Alabama's a decent team, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not all hyped up on the SEC like the rest of the world. So, honestly, if Clemson can get in, I think they win. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm going to leave it at right now. No. I think that's my take on it. I think Clemson wins if they get in. Well, we appreciate the prediction. And I, I think you're right, though. Like, it's hard to make that prediction because I don't know if there's a standout team. I think there's a lot of good teams. 
And, I, and that's the amazing thing about the playoff now. To me, it's whoever is hottest at the right time. You know, in 2014, it was Ohio State. They got hot, and they took advantage of it, and they went on to win it. And it's happened every single year. Um, last year, Clemson got hot, right? So there's certain things I think that is the number one thing to me. So I think almost like it's too early to even say. A lot of it is like like you, like obviously you're saying, is like a guess. And there's teams right now that aren't in the picture that could easily climb their way back up and get into that picture um, you know, 2014 at this time, Ohio State was number 14 in the rankings. This year, they're number 13 in the rankings. Now that said, they had only one loss was early in the year. This year, they have two losses, and I think we both know they probably don't deserve to be anywhere unless something really drastic happens. But do you see good things happening to Ohio State the rest of this year, or are we looking at like, oh my goodness, that loss to Iowa really cratered them for the rest of the year? You know, I think they're going to win out, and um, I. I think they win the, the, the conference. I, I really do. Um, the thing is with Ohio State is it's, it's been like this for a couple of years now. I truly believe that when their offense is rolling, they're the best team in the country. They really are. Our weakness is our secondary. Secondary gets picked apart sometimes, but our front seven is legit uh, on defense. But when our offense is rolling, it's it's tough to stop them. Like, they can beat any team, including Alabama. Um, I really think that the only problem is you never know. They're so bipolar when it comes to their – production on the field that you just never know what you're going to get with them so it makes it very difficult for voters like one year they they crush it with a third string quarterback they come in there and they they win the big 10 they win their first game against alabama and then they beat oregon the next year you know they can't figure out their quarterback situation until midway through the season then they're having a decent season whatever um they they ended up well what was that year they lost to michigan state like the worst timing ever yep. um so like you never know they didn't get up for the big game they they had a terrible game then the next season they end up losing later in the season but they were playing well so the voters give them the benefit of the doubt go in there get stomped so like i just i think the voters it, it just they make it so hard on the voters man but i do think ohio state is one of the it, and i actually believe they are they have the best offense in the country when they are rolling um but they, i think they win the big 10 I don't think they get in by any yeah. means to the college football playoff. Yeah. By, I don't even think it's a close. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's time. I think you're right um, to a point where they are so talented. They are very good. Um, but obviously there's there's something going on. Discipline, a lot of penalties, a lot of little mistakes. That Penn State game really shouldn't have been that close. They just put themselves so far behind. Um but it forced them to kind of open things up, and then they go into the Iowa game, and I kind of, obviously, I think that was tough. I think both Penn State and Ohio State, they, I think they both lost the next week. I mean, there's something to that. The emotions of college football, it's kind of like you were alluding to earlier. When you go to these games, it gets so emotionally charged up that coming off of those games is an, can be an incredible letdown. How do you get yourself back to that point when you're playing a team that's not as good, when it's not the same type of environment? Uh, I remember in 2006, it was the game of the century. I went with my father and my brother to Ohio State, Michigan, number one versus number two. Bo dies the night before the game. It's like, what is going on here? This is crazy. And Ohio State wins an incredible game. And I remember walking out of that stadium. I promise you, I said this to them. And I said, how is Ohio State going to get up for another game after this one? And sure enough, they show up against Florida, led by Urban Meyer, and they got their doors blown off. Like, they returned the touch, returned the opening kick for a touchdown, no. but they couldn't. You, you just Now, granted, Florida played an incredible game. Ohio State played poorly, but there was no way they were getting up to the same level they just had for that Michigan game, which is still talked about today, and it's going to be talked about for another 100 years as long as football still played, but that's a story for another podcast. Um, but, yeah, I think the emotions of college football are incredible. But I'll say this about Ohio State, where they're sending so many guys – pro and they're like three-fourths of their secondary right goes pro from last year and chances are some of those guys weren't going pro without having an incredible season like what if they went nine and three last year and what if they kind of took a step back and then those guys let's say two of them come back like say Lattimore and uh, Malik Hooker come back to Ohio State this year it changes everything but that's the story in sports, in college sports, I mean. College basketball, of course, but even college football when it's like, wow, we didn't think those guys were going pro after playing for one season. They're gone, and we have to replace them immediately. It sets us back the next year. Now, that's an excuse because it's a problem I'm sure a lot of teams would like to have, but it's the reality of it. They have to figure out a way to overcome those. Hey, we're losing Hooker and Lattimore, who were two of the best rookies in the NFL this year, Hooker got hurt. Lattimore is just dominating right now. That's got to be a problem for him. But you can't make the excuse. You got to figure it out and you got to move on. Yeah, that's it. It's just like you said, man. And 
you deal with it. Um, even at Boise State, it's it's a problem too. Just same same way. But we have, you know, from <laughs> time to time, we'll have like this NFL talent, and then all of a sudden they leave early. Well, Demarcus Lawrence, for instance, from Boise State University, he leaves after his junior year. We were forced to have to replace him, and and we don't get that talent around here very often. So we had a setback because you know he goes to the Cowboys. We needed to find a defensive end that could actually produce. Like, and you didn't expect him to leave then because you thought, oh, maybe he'll go another year. So it does. It sets those college programs back a little bit. And I think, yeah, Ohio State suffers from it. The only thing that I, I think Ohio State has going for them, though, in that sense, is they do have five-star athletes across the board pretty much. So they have the athletic, athleticism to get there. But, yeah, you have to – I mean, these guys are 18, 19 years old, so the, it's up to the coaching staff to help them mature and be disciplined enough to utilize that athleticism you know, to the best of their ability. Yeah, and you got to survive in advance. That's all it is. Just keep winning. doesn't okay. matter if you win by one or 100. Just win the game, and you never know. And you give yourself that opportunity once you're there, like they did in 2014, to get on the big stage, and you have a chance. And you have, you're have playing Alabama. If you beat them, hey. So, yeah. And now, now moving on to the next level, we start touching on the NFL a little bit. Um, let's get another prediction from you real quick. Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> I think it's going to come from the it's going to come from the NFC this year, um, and even as a Cowboys fan, I can't I can't say for sure with them because you never know what's going to happen with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, but I do think the NFC is going to take it this year. I see a lot of weaknesses with the Patriots, even though their record might show otherwise. Um, I, I just don't see the AFC winning the championship this year. So I'm honestly, the Eagles are flying right now, man. Like pun intended, because yeah. they're they're. They're doing some good things. I, I hate the Eagles with a passion, but uh, they're so well-rounded this year that I, I honestly believe they can do it. Now, obviously, it comes down to a, a younger quarterback, and you never know how they'll perform on the big stage, but we've seen younger quarterbacks do it. Um, so I think the Eagles have a legit shot. Um, even the Cowboys, if they can work out whatever's going on with Ezekiel Elliott, they've figured out what they're doing. they found their identity on offense, and so I think the Cowboys have a shot. They're a well-rounded team. But um, I think the NFC is going to take it. I'm going to first say Eagles, as much as that pains me to say I hate them so much, but I will <laughs> say the Eagles, and, and that's, yeah. my, that's my prediction. There you go. No, I like it. And, you know, they're innovative. They're fun to watch. They're doing dynamic things on offense. They're taking, you know, it's not the old school approach. A lot of teams are doing it, but they're doing it well, and they're getting guys in open space. The one concern I have for a team like the Eagles, and we see this a lot of times in the NFL, is peaking too soon. We see it in all sports, right? It's week 10. Now, we're starting to get there, right? It's starting to move. It's November. Um, but, you know, we've seen a lot of teams. You, you probably remember Tony Romo was always known as September, October. He'd light you up, and then you get into December, January. It's like he's going to fall apart. And that was, whether that was true or not, I think it's a little bit BS, but that's that was the narrative around him. So a lot of things can be done in September, October. It's like, what do you do in December and January? So we're not there yet, and I think that's the thing. I'll say this. I think the Cowboys, I, I like you said, I don't know what's going to happen with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, I don't think anybody knows. It's kind of crazy. I remember getting some messages like, he's playing this week you're like wait I thought he was suspended for the third time already and but I get it you know right. he's got to fight for his name and Michael Elkins uh, labor law attorney was on our podcast early on but before the first suspension he talked about you know that world of how the NFL has the right to suspend him so it's a great episode to listen to in that regards but I mean I think the Cowboys are doing great things and I, I kind of agree with you I think the Patriots do have some flaws that said I think the AFC has some weaknesses as well so it wouldn't surprise me to see the Patriots end up back there and like you said in any game anybody can win and you have Tom Brady on your team that's going to be tough to beat but certainly not picking the Patriots as a Bills fan uh, the Bills looked pretty good they're starting to, I don't know maybe some of those wins that they had over the Broncos and the Falcons weren't as good as we thought uh, but at the same point, you just got to win a couple games, gain some momentum, and see what can happen. And that's not only applies in sports, but it applies in business, as you know, uh, having momentum. And uh, I think, Shane, you have a lot of momentum going for yourself. I think you should keep up with what everything, everything that you're doing. We'll be watching, listening. I hope other people that are listening to this podcast will then tune into your podcast, The Game Time Guru. Definitely check it out. Um, I'm excited about the different uh, the, the different ideas and focusing on your strengths and all those other things that you're giving us. So right now, I want to give you the final uh, say. What are the, some words of encouragement you have for the audience? And then follow that up with how you want people to connect with you. Yeah, well, first off, let me just say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. I've been listening to your stuff, and I actually do read your, uh, read your articles and stuff. You guys do a great job over there, so keep that up. Um, so yeah, it's been amazing being able to talk with you today. Now, my, my, my words of encouragement would be this, like by no means am I like, 
I don't, I don't consider myself like the greatest of all time or anything like that. But if you have an idea, go and do it. Like, I, I know it sounds so cliche and all these people that, you know, work, including myself, work 40 hours a week. Like we get in this mindset that you have to work 40 hours a week to, to make, you know, 40 to $50,000 a year. And not everything is about money, but I'm just saying like, that's not true at all. And the more people I've been around, like, especially where I work, I get to see all these entrepreneurs that see success because they, they took an idea that they had and they ran with it. Um, so my, my, my encouragement would be this. If you have an idea, find a way to, to produce something with it. Like if you, my dad, for instance, he makes bullets, he likes to reload ammo and, and sell it. And he started, he made his own little shop in the back of the house. Like he's got a shop and he sells ammo. He started rolling with it. And although it's not like a ton of money, he makes a few hundred dollars here on the side and he enjoys doing it. Um, it's kind of like Derek Rose said when he, when he won the MVP back in, I think it was 2010, Derek Rose was like, why not? Why not me? And that's my, my thought as well. Why not? Because there's so many people that have ideas. So just go with it. Um, like I said, I've been reading expert secrets. I'm rereading it now. Um, everybody is an expert in their own field with whatever it is. So if you can figure out what you're an expert in and you have a passion, go with it. Um, if you guys would like to, to follow me on, you know, my podcast, obviously it's on, on iTunes, Stitcher, Google play music, uh, tune in is another one. There's just all the platforms for it. Um, it's called the game time guru with Shane Larson. Uh, I've, I've got, I think episode 34. Yes. Is, is launching this Friday. So I launch episodes every Friday. Um, and we talk about all a variety of topics like you guys have already heard. So yeah, if you want to go and subscribe to the show, go for it. Um, I would really appreciate it. If you can leave me a review even, um, after, you know, subscribing and, and listening, you can also follow me on Facebook, type in the game time guru, and you can follow me there. I do a live Facebook, uh, so a Facebook live show every Tuesday it's called the game time grind. And that's where it's about 15 to 25 minutes long, just Facebook live feed. And if you join in, you can talk with me on there. Um, so go on to uh, Facebook and, and follow me there. And I have Instagram. And so that's going to be at game time guru. There's no the in front of it. So at game time guru on Instagram, as well as Twitter is at the game time guru. So they're pretty much all the game time guru except for Instagram, which is just game time guru. And I won't even get into why that happened. It's just really irritating, but <laughs> follow me on all, the, follow me on all the social media platforms. Um, I'd be happy to, you know, interact with people. And if, if anybody would ever want to join the show um, and, and talk sports, like we talk about everything. It's just like we have, you know, different, the different football leagues, the, we're going to be having a discussion on the basketball jerseys and ranking the jerseys, stuff like that. The differences between playoff structures in the NFL, NBA, uh, NHL, MLB, stuff like that. We do little twists and turns here and there, but if you guys have a sports topic you'd like to talk about, hit me up. I'm always down to, to talk with anyone. So that's awesome, Shane. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate the time that you spent with us today. Um, I think we've, we've learned a lot. Um, I think you having the ultimate goal, but understanding that you will innovate and evolve as you continue to evolve, as the market evolves, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, so we'll be watching. We'll stay in touch for sure. And just thank you again for being on our podcast. Yeah, for sure, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Shane, it was absolutely awesome having you on this podcast. From the passion Shane brings to creating unique content in a crowded field to his drive to reach his goal, Shane is a great example of how to build a brand while having a full-time job. The perspectives he brings as a podcast host of The Game Time Guru to doing the work he loves are now perspectives you as a business owner and entrepreneur can use for yourself. And for that, Shane, thank you. And for anybody looking to learn more about the side hustle and how you can do it, I would encourage you to reach out to Shane. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. You can contact me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz, or with the same name on Instagram, or you can find us at KazSource.com with links to us on the different social networks. Thank you for listening to our KazSource podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time. Until next time, we're out of here. A big thanks to Rods Racing for their support of this podcast and allowing us to contribute to their inspiring cause.
Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. It's a big deal to us. We hope you found value in it. And if you did, we would be incredibly grateful if you gave us a review on iTunes. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and feel free to share it with anyone you know. More than anything, thank you again for listening. We appreciate it.